Mike, I'm so tired, but I don't want to have an energy drink or a cup of coffee because I fear the after effects. What if I told you there was something more effective out there than energy drinks when it comes to focus and mental performance, and it doesn't come with jitters, energy crashes, or anything related to those side effects of caffeine. Amazing flavors such as pineapple and mango, blueberry verdana, and one of my favorites, raspberry and mint. Now I've actually had nootropics. I take these when I'm feeling a little bit low and I just need that energy boost for an afternoon meeting. Tell you what, Steve, they do the trick. This week we are sponsored by Bright Drinks. Bright make a wonderful new drink for better focus, better concentration, alertness with nothing artificial. Nootropics helps to improve focus and productivity without the typical side effects of caffeine alone. You can discover it on brightdrinks.com, Sainsbury's and many more. Hello and welcome back to the second of the 2021 Last Resort Christmas specials here on the Bad Script podcast and sat virtually across the table from me, Mr. Mike Garlia. Uh, a pleasure to see you again this week, Mr. Garlia. How are you? Wow, things have changed. I used to get effervescent and awesome and, and different connotations. Uh, <laughs> I'm okay. I can't believe it's been a week since our last episode. It must be a time of year thing where time just speeds up, you know? It isn't incredible. On the point about your name, you used to you used to say to me, oh, you come up with all these things and I don't come up with anything. Blah, blah, blah. So I thought, oh, you know what? I'm not going to put the guy under pressure. I just don't want to do that him. anymore. I didn't want you to feel bad. And now you feel bad that I'm not saying nice things about it. So. It's just the honeymoon period is over, clearly. That's it. It's now yeah. into business as usual. We're, we're dialing it in now with our, <laughs> with our, with our interactions. Well, are we, we're letting the story speak for itself now rather than, uh, rather than, than us speaking for the story. I think that's the, uh, the difference now, isn't it? it? It could be. It could well be. <laughs> so shall we, shall we recap on last week's episode? What do you reckon? Yes, please. Yeah, please. So we, the guys are, are on resort. They're living there. They're bored out of the brains. They're hanging around in their pants. Wayne's going off uh, doing some scouting for new acts. Um, and so Adam decides he's going to go and visit Sam. And uh, and uh, then we, we see the, them turn up at her house. The boys decide to go along for the ride. And uh, well, was she pleased to see him? Yes, I would say, yeah, I think so. I, I, um, I don't think, I think she was surprised. Um, yeah. And, you know, it, it does lead to a question while we're on that subject of you're going to visit your girlfriend, which is driven and motivated out of paranoia, and you take your two mates with you. Would you do that? It's a weird one, isn't it? It, it feels a little bit like, if you need to be having those private conversations that maybe having Dan and Robin with you is not the best option at this point in time, but uh, you know, they've been pretty well behaved so far really though, haven't they? Yeah. I think, I think Dan since the beginning of the season has matured considerably uh, compared with his, uh, his antics in the, in the season. And, uh, but there's always that opportunity for him to do something a little bit crazy. So, you know, never put that past him. I think it's safe to say. Um, it was a, a reasonably successful uh, visit until we saw uh, uh, Sam talking to a guy in the uh, in the in the uh, the factory uh, break area. Mister Porky's sausage roll factory. So uh, Adam didn't look too happy about that. His paranoia uh, moving into overdrive. Do you think? I think it's probably a series of events that is driving Adam's mindset. And uh, it's, I, I can't say anything without giving spoils away because I, it's so fresh in my mind. I know what, I know what's going to happen. So I can't really say very much other than uh, the listeners. Um, where do you, you know, where do you think it's going to go? As we said in the last one, is it going to go the right way? Is it going to go the wrong way? Uh, you'll find out in this particular episode. Yeah, and what is the right and wrong way? Exactly. What? Yeah, interesting to hear what people think. 
Uh, but the one thing uh, really to touch on, um, having recorded the first episode, listened to the first episode, there is a, there is a bit of a difference to our writing this time round, isn't there? There's uh, it's far more descriptive than it than it was originally. And I think some of that comes subconsciously from the fact that we know we're now making the podcast and and we're telling a story. And you know, we are eighteen years more mature than we were, so it's only natural that our writing would have matured along with us. Uh, some might not agree, um, <laughs> but. I think, you know, there's there's bound to be some sort of progression on from where we were. But I still like to think that the essence of the, ca- the characters are still there and that maybe we're just a little bit more descriptive with the way we set up the scenes. I would agree with that one. And just to recap on, on the rules, which was the original rules we followed all those years ago, uh, what you were hearing is the very first draft. No amendments, no changes. It is read as written for the very first time. Uh, and I think we should recap on that one. It's not like we've had loads of time and this is like version seven. It's not. It's literally, we finished writing it one day. We started recording the next day and it is literally that quick. So <laughs> what you're <laughs> hearing is us <laughs> talking the lines out for the very first time, having just wrote it. And that's where in the last episode, there was a kind of pork theme. It, it's, it, that's the interesting thing now is when we take a step back and we go, oh, hang on a minute, there's there's a theme here or there's an oversight or there's something happening that we never quite caught as you're dipping in and out. And how long would you say it took us to write this this particular two episodes? Uh, oof. So far, I think we've probably spent a good week, maybe a week and a half of pure writing to get to where it is. Uh, and dipping in and out, and a little known fact for everyone as well, um, we're writing quite late at night, so it's always roughly around 10 o'clock at night. We start writing after a full day at work, after all the commitments and responsibilities we have, we then sit down and start <laughs> writing. And I'll, I'll admit, there are times I go, oh, I just really don't want to do it tonight. I just I don't know <laughs> if I've got enough energy inside me. But we carried on going because we were so eager to get these out. Do you know what? You sounded just like my wife then. Um <laughs> I know she tells me constantly. Yeah. Um, to be fair. <laughs> so, um, so there we go. Um, that's a little bit of, a, of, of insight and insider information. Absolutely. So I think we jump straight back in um, and go back. Adam has just walked away from the factory, having seen the laughing and joking uh, Sam with the mystery man. Uh, let's pick up where he is now. Interior, Wine Lodge, late afternoon. Robin is sat at the table with Adam, who is mournfully staring into his pint. Dan is stood at the booth, chatting excitedly to the DJ. He nods his head enthusiastically, jogs back to the table. Guys, you're not going to believe this. I've got us a gig. A a gig? What are you on about? Where? And when? Now? Right now? I told him about us, and he wants us to do a few songs, like now. Robin and Adam look at Dan in surprise. No, mate, I'm not. I'm not doing it. Fuck's sake, man. We come here to see your girlfriend, and you're still moping. Cheer the fuck up. You're doing my head in. Just leave it, all right? Coming in five minutes, a performance from a brand new boy band. So get your drinks and get over to the dance floor. These guys are going to blow you away. That that was the DJ, by the way, just in case you didn't get that. <laughs> I, I think we got it. It's OK. <laughs> the music lifts towards the end and we can see people looking around the venue, trying to see who it is. Robin and Adam stand motionless while Dan takes his jacket off. No going back now, boys. Dan, you are a dick. Bugger it. Come on, in for a penny. Robin grabs Adam's arm and walks him to the stage area. Dan joins and they take position. Quickly, a crowd gathers with a drunken party piling onto the dance floor. They're all staring at the boys. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for new pop sensation. Fusion! The party girls scream as the intro music swells. (laughs) 
interior wine lodge early evening. Sam enters the bar and scans the room. The place is jumping with great atmosphere. She can't see the boys and steps deeper into the bar. In front of her are the party girls and she spots Robin taking a shot. She enters the fray to reveal the boys surrounded by the girls, all huddled around like a fan club. Sam moves closer to Dan and touches his arm, making a presence known. Sam! The girls make some space to let Sam in. Adam is laughing and joking with a woman. His mood vastly improved since we last saw him. He makes eye contact with Sam, and although his smile fades a little, he steps towards her. <laughs> Looks like you guys are popular. What's going on? Hey, Sam. <laughs> Dan. Dan is what's happened. <laughs> I'll explain later. Sorry to rush you, but Mum's making a special dinner for you guys. Oh, really? Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. It, it just means we have to leave now. Gotcha. Let's get going. Guys, we're moving. Let's go. They grab their jackets and start to leave. There's a disappointed groan from the party girls. One of them grabs Robin by his shirt, begging him not to leave. There are shouts of disapproval. I'm sorry, ladies. Duty calls. We have an important engagement to get to. You all stay fabulous. Woo! The party girls all woo in return. So that, that so it seems the boys went down well. Well, I mean, yes, to a bunch of drunken people in a in a wine lodge. How many times do you have to say wine lodge in a single a wine lodge? Of say, I think we say wine lodge a lot. I, I think we all know what the wine lodge is that everyone has been referred to. Yeah, yes. no one, yet no one's drinking wine in the lodge of wine. In the wine lodge, no one's drinking wine. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, they're not. But you know what, the guys they've they've gone out there and they've done the thing. And Adam seems to have, although he was in a stinky mood when he first got there. Um, Getting a performance seems to have taken his mind off things a bit. That's, that's fair what, to say. That's what happens when you do an impromptu show in a wine lodge on a Sunday afternoon in front of a bunch of drunken revelers. It is the <laughs> cure for any and all ills. Yeah, and uh, and a negative <laughs> mindset. Interior: Kathleen's house, kitchen, early evening. Kathleen is preparing vegetables. A small cassette player on the windowsill is blasting the song Bomb Diggy, which Kathleen is singing and dancing along to. You know it's not Bomb Diggy Diggy when we get jiggy, let me piggyback ride on it all night when I'm singing my song. Sam and the boys enter the kitchen. Mum, what are you singing? That's the boys' fusion demo song. It's good, isn't it? How did you get that? Do you even need to ask? Dan is grinning wildly. You can have that one. We've got plenty of them. Of all the songs you could pick, you demo that. It's an instant classic, that. Are you boys going to get cleaned up? Then I'll be ready soon. The boys all leave the kitchen. Thanks for doing this, Mum. No problem, love. Adam seems quite nice. He is, isn't he? Oh, handsome boy. No, I think so. Sam, is it, you know, serious? Mom? What? I can ask that, can't I? Sam picks up a carrot and starts chopping, deep in thought. Well? Well, what? Don't change the subject. I'm not so sure she is, actually. She just said, well, what? <laughs> Let's not change the subject. What That's subject? Question. We must have been drinking that night. I really do like him. Love him, maybe. He makes me happy, but it's complicated. Well, you'll figure it out, I'm sure. Adam enters the doorway behind them. Neither notice his presence. I'm just not sure how it's going to work between us. Adam. Upon hearing this, looks shocked. His eyes move to the floor. He looks crestfallen. Unable to listen any more, he steps back and leaves the kitchen. Here, yeah, pass me the salt. We'll figure it out. I'm willing to give it a shot. We've been through so much to get here, to this moment. It'd be a waste to give up. Well, it sounds like you know what you want, love. 
I think I do. The doorbell chimes. We hear an off-screen voice. Hello? We're in the kitchen, love. Come in. So, look, let's just talk about that for a second um, to make it crystal clear. So he's walked in on a conversation and missed half the conversation. Yeah, and he hears just the bit where Sam's saying, I really don't know how it's going to work because, of the, you know, he's, she's thinking logistically. He perhaps thinks more into that around the, you know, whether how their feelings are. You know, he's already said he loves her and she's not reciprocated. And now she's, he's heard her say, I don't know how it's going to work. So I think that builds up in him a little bit of worry, maybe. Mm, in the words of Ryan Reynolds, that's a big dollop of foreshadowing right there. Interior, Kathleen's house. Hallway, early evening. The door opens and in walks Craig. He sees Adam sat on the bottom of the stairs. They make eye contact. Adam stands up, making it to Craig's nose, despite the fact he stood on the bottom step. Robin appears at the top of the steps in just a towel. Shower's free! He spots Craig at the bottom of the stairs. All right. Craig doesn't wait for response and walks past towards the kitchen. Who's that? Craig. Interior, Kathleen's house, kitchen, early evening. The door opens and Craig enters, a big smile on his face. Hello, love. As my favourite lady, I bought you something. Craig puts down a large black bin liner on the counter. Over a hundred sausage rolls. Better get them in the freezer. Oh, bless you. Thank you, love. What are you doing here? Just dropping some stuff off. Fly and visit. Okay. Oh, it's been a darling. Always coming round with pastries and stuff. Well, you've been a second mum to me, Kathy. Kathy got something for you too, Sam. Craig hands Sam a card and she puts it down on the counter. Open it then. I'll I'll read it later. Nah, go on. I picked it special. Sam reluctantly opens the card on the front saying, thinking of you this Christmas. She opens it and written inside is, have a good Christmas. Miss you. Love always, Craig. Sam doesn't react and puts it down on the counter again. Thanks, Craig. Uh, Merry Christmas to you too. Kathleen picks up the card and reads it also. Oh, you are sweet, Craig. I'm so glad you two could be friends. Well, friends is better than nothing. Craig looks directly at Sam, who is concentrating on the vegetables, trying not to make eye contact. Well, I'll I'll be off then. Uh, my pot noodle won't boil itself. <laughs> oh, Craig, you need to be eating right. Well, I mean, it's just me in the flat. Doesn't seem much point making a fancy meal for little old me. Sam rolls her eyes, spotting the signs of manipulation. Why don't you take some of those sausage rolls back with you? Oh, I can't stand them. They haunt my dreams. Kathleen laughs at this, and even Sam smiles. Adam walks into the kitchen. They each turn to see him. Adam, have you met Craig? Sam looks embarrassed as Adam steps towards Craig. No, we haven't met, no. Craig extends his hand with a giant smile, and Adam takes it. Craig's giant hand engulfs Adam's, and we see a little pressure applied during the handshake. Craig stares intently. The smile now looks menacing. Craig was uh, just dropping some stuff off for my mum, but um, he's leaving now. Craig, still shaking Adam's hand, responds. Yeah, I'll, I'll better be going. Oh, don't be daft. Stay for dinner. Mum, I, I think Craig has other plans. He just said he didn't. Right, Craig? It does smell good, Kathy. Then it's settled. Sam, be a darling and put another plate on the table, will you? 
you can let go of my hand now, mate. I know. He slowly lets go of Adam's hand and turns to face Kathleen. Right, what can I do? Adam rubs his right hand, which is red and throbbing from the pressure. Sam walks past him, takes his arm, and encourages him to follow her. Interior, Kathleen's house, living room, early evening. The living room now hosts a dress table in the middle. An abundance of Christmas food and paraphernalia adorns it, and a VHS of Shaking Stephen's Christmas special is playing on the TV. Sam puts an extra plate on the table and moves the placemats across. Adam stands near the door looking on. Table looks nice. Mum loves entertaining, especially at Christmas. She even makes her own crackers. Adam smiles unenthusiastically. Look, I, I know it's weird. I'm sorry. Sorry for what? <laughs> Which part? Uh, your ex showing up out of the blue? You working with him day in, day out? Or was all playing happily family around the dinner table? Oh, don't be like that, Adam. He's friends with my mum. It's nothing to do with me. Well, I just wasn't expecting this. And I wasn't expecting you to turn up either. Well, it's a good job I did. Just imagine... Me sat at that shitty chalet whilst my girlfriend enjoys a romantic candlelit dinner with her ex. That's not fair. I haven't done anything wrong. He turned up tonight. That was nothing to do with me. So why didn't you tell me you were working with him? Sam just looks at him. She's about to answer. The door opens and in walks Dan and Robin. Bloody hell. Look at this. Two forks on the table. Proper posh that. Yes, and a tablecloth as well, Dan. Uh, I am not as common as you think I am, mate. I always remember Portergeist 3 when I go to a posh dinner. Huh? Outside in, Carol Ann. Outside in. Kathleen enters the room. Right, boys, have a seat. Dan and Robin, you're over there. Adam, next to Sam and Craig. Craig enters and immediately sits at the head of the table. Sam on his left, then Adam, Kathleen at the bottom, then Robin and Dan next to Craig. They all sit, and it immediately feels awkward. Isn't this nice? It's been such a long time since this house was full of life. I propose a toast. At this, everyone takes hold of their glass. Adam is hesitant and does nothing. They all notice as Sam gives Adam a light nudge. He reluctantly lifts his glass as Craig smiles widely. Ears to love everlasting, to memory shared, adventures past, present and future, to new friends and old lovers, for sharing this wonderful spread with the two most beautiful women in the world. Cheers. Cheers! Adam, muttering under his breath, which Sam hears. Dick. Oh, Craig, you're such a charmer. Meant every single word, Kathy. If you were only ten years younger, eh? Craig laughs, as does Kathleen. Um, and can I just say, just say to Kathleen and Sam, thank you as well for making dinner and let us sleep in your lean-to. I'd like to be the first to contribute. Dan is holding a crumpled up five-pound note in his hand, which he waves across the table. Everyone looks at him. Robin looks horrified as he snatches the note out of his hand and puts it on the table. Well, that's nice, Dan but not necessary. Now, everyone, tack in. Kathleen extends a Christmas cracker to Sam, which is encouraging everyone else. Adam picks his up and turns to face Sam. Sam is facing away and pulling on Craig's cracker. That's a deal breaker. <laughs> that is a deal breaker right there. You can't, you can't pull another man's cracker in front, <laughs> you of, just your can't. Cousin, in front of your you boyfriend, just can't. can you? It's just not the done thing. <laughs> Mate, I'll do it. Adam reluctantly lets Dan pull his. It cracks loudly. Sorry, I don't know. So is that what a cra- that's what a cracker's meant to do, isn't it? <laughs> it cracks quietly. It's just that Adam reluctantly Dan lets Dan pull his that got me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we didn't say. Yeah, okay. I'm just thinking about it, it cracks loudly. It cracks- <laughs> yeah, well, that's, he's obviously not doing it right. <laughs> Sam wins the cracker pull with Craig and laughs in delight. 
I won, this is mine. Fair enough. You always were good at tugging. Craig winks. Sam turns to Adam. Want me to pull yours? Too late, I've already did it. Do you want to pull mine? Nah, that's okay. Sam looks disappointed and stares at Adam. I'll do it, says Robin. There, there is a lot of um, emphasis on disappointment around cracker pulls around this table for something it was, you know is, is, is this a really big deal about who pulls your own cracker or who, <laughs> sorry not wait let me rephrase who pulls a cracker is that a big thing is that like a kind of i don't know what it's I like think, in your house i think there's like a pseudo sexual tension in the room and it's like um it's like a freudian nightmare isn't it like whose cracker will she pull and it kind of feels like there's this definite tension in the air that's sexual tension and that's what's I, d- I don't think it feels like it i think craig has said it he, he literally said you always were good at tugging and then winks her so i, d- I think it, it's pretty blatant yeah it is but i don't think craig's a man of subtlety is he so you know he gave that, a good speech just... that was a, that was a good dinner speech if i do say so myself um <laughs> <laughs> It's almost as if you wrote it. It's almost as if it came from our heads, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm saving that one. I'm saving that one for the Christmas Day speech. Marvellous. And if any listeners want to take it, please do, but you have to reference me and Steve at the same time. (laughs) And if you are pulling crackers on Christmas Day, please think of us. Interior, Kathleen's house. Living room, night. The main course is being consumed. Turkey is next to Craig, who has done the carving. The Shaking Stevens Christmas special music is still playing. Adam is staring into his plate, moving food around. Good grub this, Kathleen. Best meal I have ever had. Oh, thanks, Dan. Everyone else enjoying it? So wait, what? <clears throat> <laughs> she suddenly moved to Dorset then, I don't know. <laughs> thanks, Dan. Everyone else enjoying it? It's it's really nice, thank you. So, Adam, Sam tells me you're going back for another season. Adam looks up. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, that that's that's the plan. Yeah. And the boy Ben, it's going well. It it is. Yeah. Uh, loads of work to do, but hopefully, uh, we can move it on a bit. It's, uh, it is going well, and um, well, we're sending the demo out to a few labels too. Remember remember when me, Jacko, and, uh, and Benny entered the karaoke competition? How funny was that? Sam laughs. Adam drinks his wine and tops it up. Oh, yeah, that was funny. What? We did all right. We came third. Proper harmonies and everything. There were only three entrants. They both laugh. Adam downs his drink. That was just before we had that amazing holiday in Tenerife. I've still got all the pictures of mine. You and that red bikini. Have you still got that? Craig? That's a yes then. (laughs) I don't think we hardly left the hotel room. That was a long time ago. What are you on about? It was last year. Robin spotting the tension building. Oh, uh, uh, Kathleen, you have a lovely home. Very tasteful. That lamp is to die for. Oh, thank you, Robin. Uh, we got that lamp. Remember, Sam? We we broke that brown one after that crazy night at your cousin's wedding. I picked that up at a charity shop downtown. Antique, I reckon. Can we just talk about something else? Oh, you know, you get after a few aftershocks. And how's that? Oh, Mum. You must show me how you make this bread sauce. There is silence at the table. Adam finishes another glass and gets the red, filling up his glass again. Mate, slow down a bit. Oh, Craig gave me the recipe. It's a family secret. I'll tell you, but you'd have to marry me. Sam, can I just say that it's been lovely spending time here. Um, Kathleen, thank you for making us feel so welcome. And Sam... <laughs> would say thank you for being my girl adam leans into sam and kisses her on the cheek oh thanks adam he then moves himself forwards towards sam 
puts his hand on either side of her face and moves in to give her a large, open-mouthed kiss, whilst looking directly at Craig. Sam takes his hands and removes them, and leans back away from his advancing mouth. Adam, not now. Adam looks hurt by this and moves back to his chair, now drunk. As he slams into the table, he knocks his glass of red wine over, which spills onto Sam and the nice tablecloth. Adam! Adam registers this and looks clumsily around. So, so sorry, sorry. Some people can't handle it. Early night for you, fella. Sam gets up, covered in red wine. Kathleen jumps up too. My carpet! It's a shag! Kathleen and Sam hurry to the kitchen. Dan and Robin follow, picking up their plates. Adam looks at Craig. I know what you're doing. <laughs> and what's that? Adam stutters and can't really reply. Exactly what I thought. You're a fucking pussy. Kathleen returns back to the room with cloths and carpet cleaner. Adam jumps up to try and help. Let, let me. I, I can do it. Let me. Oh, that's okay, love. I think you've had a bit too much to drink. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, honest. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Sam enters the room. Come on, Adam. Where are we going? You can sleep it off in my room. I'm fine. Come on, you. I'll tuck you in. Do it for me. Adam looks smugly at Craig as he puts his arm around her shoulder. She's my girlfriend, right? Remember that. Craig laughs at that and gives a menacing stare. He speaks to Sam. You'd better get Twinkle Toes to bed before she hurts herself. Sam looks unimpressed and takes to the stairs with Adam. We hear Craig in the background shout loudly. Right, who's up for some Baileys and a game of charades? So, we've had um, the first meeting of Craig and Adam, the two men of Sam's life, past and present. It is a bit weird, really, isn't it? Um... I think it's uh, look. I can't look. You know, I can't blame Adam for reacting the way he's reacting. He Craig is clearly goading him um, over the table in a pan, kind of passive way. Um, question is: Is Sam picking up on this, or is she just oblivious, um, like everyone else is? Because no one else has said a word, and you know, obviously we've seen a snapshot at the dinner table, and Adam unfortunately gets quite drunk and just makes it worse for himself, and he's the one that looks like a bit of a tit. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I think. Maybe maybe Robin spotted something, but I think he's just like, I'm not getting involved in this. This is not my problem. This is not my thing. And and um, yeah, Adam and his drinking, it was a problem during the season. And, you know, he's drowning his sorrows, I think, a little here after everything is experienced in this, you know, this visit's not really been what he wanted it to be. And it's it's, it's not been great, has it? I'm just gutted he wasted a whole glass of red wine. I mean, <laughs> especially on the on the on the shag pile as well. That's not that, that's not good. Thing, you know, that's the last thing you want because it gets deep in there, doesn't it? It really does. So let me ask you this: if it, if this happened in your house with your daughter's boyfriend, you know, far into the future, would you invite him back? I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure he'd have been allowed in in the first place. Um, you know, <laughs> as as I've uh, I've already planned out what my uh, my daughter's uh, boyfriends will have to just refer to me as sensei, um, and um, the promise is that everything, and I mean everything that they do to my daughter, I will do to them. So it's up to them. I, I'm sorry. What? Yeah. Exactly. What? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's food for. Good okay. for thought. Yeah, no, all the years I've known you and, and you never cease to surprise me. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you for that. And imagination's gone into overdrive. All the things they will do to my daughter, I will do to them. Well, that's the warning um, I'm giving them, you see. So that's the... So future boyfriends, uh, this, if this is flying around the internet in the, in the far future and you listen to this, you have been warned. Be very careful. Don't, they'll, they'll be warned. Don't worry when they're standing on the tiptoes with their nose facing the wall. Uh, as part of their, uh, you know, uh, interview process. Jesus, it's not prison, Steve. What you? It's well, not prison. It, yeah, and I'm not afraid to go back, so they best behave. <laughs> Exterior, train station, morning. The boys are on the platform waiting for their train. 
Sam is talking to Adam, who looks a little worse for wear. Apologise to your mum for me. It's fine. I don't need to. I'm really embarrassed. Uh, Train's here, mate. You go ahead. I'll be with you in a minute. Dan nods and leaves. Before you leave, this, uh, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. Look, before you do, I know this long distance thing is tough, but we'll, we'll make it work. We'll, we'll ma- we will make it work. Okay. Adam, I need you to just relax. You've not been yourself the past couple of days, but anyway, I, I do want to say something to you. A voice comes over the tannoy. This is the last call for the 815 service departing from Platform 3. Any persons wishing to alight, please do so now. I've, I've got to go. Adam grabs Sam and hugs her. I don't want to leave you. I don't want you to go either. We need to talk. Dan's head pops out of the train door. Adam, for fuck's sake, the train's going to go. Hurry up. Adam kisses Sam hurriedly and runs to the train. He jumps into the door as it closes. Sam runs up to the door as well to see him off. Adam drops down the window as the train starts moving. I'll call you tonight, okay? The train speeds up as it leaves the station. We stay with Sam as Adam slowly disappears. I love you! I love you too. As Sam is saying this, the overhead tannoy announcement masks her response so Adam doesn't hear. She's left alone, staring at the train as it fades from view. Interior, bus, afternoon. The boys are almost home and are sat on a bus in traffic a mile away from the resort. Oh my god, I really need to pee. This has been the longest journey ever. Uh, Do you want my bottle to piss in? Ew, no. We're really late for work, by the way. Relax, it's only Karen. She's been mate, she'll cover for us. Wayne isn't back till tomorrow. We'll be all right. As he says this, Wayne's Jeep pulls up alongside the bus, also stuck in traffic. A homemade R&B slash electronic remix of Sitting on the Dock of the Bay is blasting out of the vehicle. Dan notices and looks out of the window. At this point, Wayne also turns to look up at the bus, spots Dan and immediately looks away. Dan, upon this, grabs Adam and dives down in the seat. Robin sees this and also slides down in his seat. Wayne double takes and looks back into what appears to be an empty bus. He shakes his head and pulls away. (sighs) Close call that. What the hell? Wayne nearly saw us, you muppet. Are you kidding? We've got to beat him back. Ow, we're stuck on a fucking bus. Shit. If we get caught, I'm blaming you two. All right, all right, all right. Let me think. Right, Robin, you run straight to the office. Dan, you get to Wayne and distract him. And uh, what will you be doing? Spewing in the nearest bin. (laughs) That's a proper shit plan, mate. Yep. Well... All right, what do you suggest? Robin and Dan look at each other and shrug. Yeah, thought so. Adam stands up and rings the bell. The bus starts to slow down as we see the camp resort sign come into view. Operation Fusion is a go, go, go! (laughs) Interior, chalet, night. Adam and Robin are seated on the sofa watching Die Hard, whilst Dan is rummaging around the fridge, searching for food. (sighs) You two are a bloody nightmare. We nearly got caught. Hippie Kai, hey, Mother Crusher. What? That's not it. Yeah, it is. You can't tell me I'm wrong about a Die Hard movie. They practically raised me. It's not the right line, Dan. You're wrong. A fiver that I'm not. Oh, shit. No! Robin and Adam sit up. What? What is it? It's the bacon. It's off. What are we going to do with half a kilo of stinking pig meat? 
<laughs> you should ask your girlfriend that one. Adam chuckles and Dan laughs. And talking about girlfriends, I'm off to call mine. Adam jumps up, grabs his jacket and heads to the door. And Dan? Dan looks over. It's yippee ki Leave the fiver in my room. Interior, fun bar, night. The venue is packed, playing 80s and 90s party songs, and it's loud and noisy. The atmosphere is buzzing as Christmas decorations dazzle in the lights. There are tables filled with people drinking and talking. We pan across until we see Sam talking to a group of friends. That was S Club 7 with Reach for the Stars. Hope you're having a fantastic time. The night is still young and the Christmas spirit isn't the only thing flowing tonight. Big shout out to the gang from Mr. Porky's here on their works too. Have a good one, guys, and keep the meat juicy. Don't forget to show your pass at the bar where Mr. P himself has put a gram behind there. When it's gone, it's gone. Here's a classic from my era. Ladies, get yourself on the dance floor for a bit of Dancing Queen. The music from ABBA stirs up and the ladies immediately start moving and strutting their way to the dance floor. No drinks on the dance floor, girls. No drinks on the dance floor. We pan back to Sam, who stands up. Want to dance? Yeah, give me a sec. I just need a wee first. I'll come with you. Sam puts her bag on the table and walks away with her friend. We move towards the bag as her mobile phone starts flashing. Craig, who is stood just beyond view, enters the frame, reaches down and picks up the phone. Sam, your phone's ringing. Sam doesn't hear him and carries on walking. Craig looks down and sees Adam's name flashing on the green screen. His fingers move towards the red reject button. He hesitates, has a quick look around, then answers the phone. Exterior. Camp Resort, Beach, Night. The loud music and background noise fills Adam's ears as he turns his back to the sea to listen better. Sam, hello. Can you hear me? There's a pause. Sam! All right, Twinkle Toes. Adam freezes in shock and disbelief. What are you doing with Sam's phone? Can I talk to her? Where is she? She's a bit busy, mate, if you know what I mean. No. No, I don't know what you mean. What's going on, Craig? (laughs) Well, we're on a night out, having a good time, too. Her her work's night out? Nah, mate, that ended hours ago. It's just us now, like the old days. Are you fucking kidding me? Listen to me, Craig, you fucking arsehole. Interior, fun pub, night. Craig interrupting. You listen to me, you little pissant. You've got no idea who you're messing with. Don't be fooled by that Mr. Brucey Nicey Nice act from yesterday. I won't think twice about smashing 60 shades of shit out of you. And what are you going to do? Beat me to death with a bin bag full of sausage rolls, you prick? Keep talking and they'll be finding you in a fucking bin bag, mate. Adam pauses. Yeah, I thought so. Now listen to me, Twinkle Dick. Sam's mine. She always was. What she saw in a prick like you, I will never know. So unless you want me to come down there, rip your head off, I'll toddle off and forget about her. Craig, can you just put Sam on? Craig senses victory and smiles wildly. I'll tell you what. Tonight when I'm showing her what she's been missing I'm bringing back some dirty memories I'll ask her to spare you a thought while she's moaning my name Craig hangs up Sam reappears and spots her phone in Craig's hand what are you doing with my phone it it fell on the floor I was just picking it up oh were you what have I said about going into my bag Craig overstepping the mark I was just looking out for your sweetheart. Look, I'm not your sweetheart, Craig. We're over. Everything you're doing right now is making it worse. And what what am I doing? Everything. 
turning up yesterday, constantly coming on to me. Did you not think I saw what you were doing to Adam? What do you see in him? He's he's everything you're not. And unlike our relationship, he makes me happy. <laughs> you keep telling yourself that, darling. Leave me alone. Leave my mum alone. Just go away. Sam grabs her bag and coat, snatches her phone from his hand and storms off. Exterior. Camp resort. Beach. Night. Adam is sat on the beach. Tears are streaming down his face. He stares at the dark screen of his phone. He presses a button and the display lights. Then the notification that says, message sent. Adam stands up, lets out a painful cry, a guttural scream that echoes across the empty beach. And with all his strength, he throws his phone into the freezing cold sea. Fade out. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of script one of our Christmas specials. The dun, first two dun, episodes dun, 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 dun. <laughs> It was a little bit East Enders y, wasn't it, for the end there? It was a little bit. A lot to digest there, though, Mike. A lot, of, a lot going on. Well, I'm sure um, you know some of our listeners that have followed these these characters around will. Um, that I think there may be some frustrations coming through around these guys just can't seem to to make it work. They just can't seem to to move past these these early relationship problems, really. Um, and um, just for full clarity, ladies and gentlemen, we haven't yet written the next episode, so um, this could go anywhere. Yeah, so if you feel like you want to contribute, you want to make suggestions about where things will go next, then please feel free to drop us a line on our social media. You can get us on Twitter or on Instagram or Facebook. Be sure to let us know what you think should happen next. Plus, we would also like to hear what you think the text was. So uh, suggestions on what, what that text said. Uh, please please send them in to us. Um, what did Adam text and who did he text well on that note i think we've come to the end of another episode we hope you've enjoyed our little trip down to uh, sam's house and back and that you will join us again next week for our third installment of the christmas specials and we will see you right then and there but as always i will leave the final words to my esteemed co-host mr mike garlier um, the final words are going to be, because we haven't heard the painful cry, which is a guttural scream. So uh, this is what I imagine Adam on the beach screaming into the wind sounds like. <laughs> that, that was throwing the phone. Thank you, Mike. Thank you to all of our listeners. And we'll see you next time on Bad Scripts. Goodbye. Bad Scripts was written and performed by Mike Garlier and Steve Jones, a Beach Tide production.